Good morning. This is the Blaine's World podcast that can be found each week on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also listen in on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You get more information, listen to shows and past shows at www.blainesworld.net. I'm your host, Blaine Greenfield, and I'm here in my Zoom studio in lovely downtown Fairview, North Carolina. And each week we focus on positive news and information about people and organizations in both Western North Carolina and throughout the country. And toward that end, it's my pleasure to introduce Paul King, who's a volunteer photographer, among other things. And Paul, you can wave to all your fans and friends who are watching this on Facebook. Okay, and that is Paul King, who's quite a guy, as you'll hear in just a little bit. He grew up in central New Jersey. And I should ask you, Paul, where did you grow up in Jersey? Um, uh, North Plainfield and Bridgewater. Okay, yeah. So I was in um, East Windsor and then um, Bell Mead, not too far from you. Yeah. And uh, he graduated from Indiana University, um, Cornell University, and the University of South Carolina School of Law. He practiced law in Orangeburg, Orangeburg South Carolina, and then met, and then he moved to Asheville uh, in 1988, where he had an office in the seventh floor of the Flatiron Building downtown. Mm-hmm. His focus was on family law, estate um, administration, and medication. He was the public administrator of of um, estates for Buncombe County for a few years. Photography is something he enjoys when not at the office. He began working as a wedding photographer on uh, weekends and continued taking on more assignments uh, after he retired. Nowadays, he enjoys volunteering his time with the camera for many different events and programs. And Paul, I have to say, you know, we, we just mentioned retired. You're one of the busiest guys I know, of, you know, who is somebody who's supposed to retired. I mean, um, one, of the, one of the great things about Paul King is that you'll see him in so many different places with a camera. Yes. And so let, let's talk a little bit about that process. Um, as a child, you grew up, you mentioned, in central New Jersey, right? Right, yep. Did, did you always know, we'll take it two ways, um, did you always know you want to be a lawyer? Um, I, th- I think in high school, we had a, um, um, we had a mock trial and um, I got to be a lawyer in the mock trial thing. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. And I enjoyed doing that. And um, so it was kind of in the back of my mind. I wasn't sure about it, but um, the, I think the seed was planted at that point. Now, at the same time, you were also doing photography? Uh, I started photography in high school. I was the photography editor of the high school yearbook and of the newspaper. And that's kind of got, where I got started. And what got you into photography? Um, well, my parents gave me a camera for Christmas. <laughs> and I started taking pictures, I guess, for the yearbook or the newspaper. And um, then I wrote a letter to the local, the Messenger Gazette, which was a local weekly newspaper in, in, in Somerville, New Jersey. And I sent them some pictures and said, would you like, would you like an intern? And um, they contacted me back and said, come on in for an interview. And, um, and I got hired. And I, I got paid $2 an hour to um, process prints, you know, in the dark room. And then eventually they started sending me out to basketball games and all kinds of stuff. Do you remember your first camera? Well, I still have, well, I still I, have it. I was, was going to ask you. Petri FTEE. Um, my dad bought it um, on 42nd Street in um, New York City um, at a, at a, in a store. And um, and it was a great camera, and I just about wore it out. And I got a second one, and lenses, and just kept building from there. It's cool you still have it. Do you yeah. remember then the very first picture you ever took? Took what you got paid to take? You know, as you mentioned, the one job for the the local paper. Do you remember the first time you ever got paid to take pictures? Um, I don't remember my first time, but um, I remember one of my more exciting times. There was a um, a barn was on fire at night. And uh, the regular photographer for the newspaper was not available. And uh, I didn't have my driver's license yet. So <laughs> I sent a reporter out to my house to pick me up <laughs> and take me out at nighttime to this burning bar- barn full of hay. And, um, and it was, that was a difficult shot because it's nighttime and a fire. But um, I, got, I had a tripod and I, I took the shot and I took a bunch of shots. But I, I got a good one and developed it that night. And then I don't know how I got it to the newspaper, but he got it to the newspaper the next day. And like the day after that, it was on the front page of the newspaper. So. Did you get a photo byline too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They were good about that. Yeah. Okay. Very, very exciting. 
Do you still have yeah. that picture around? I think I do. Yes, I think I do. Yeah. Okay. I, well, I have a, a notebook that I kept a lot of those pictures in. I'm looking. I don't see in the background, Paul, the frame picture of the first check. You know, I want to see that. You, know, you got this. <laughs> but very exciting. So as a kid, yeah. so that was your first gig. When did you start doing weddings? Um, well, I did start doing weddings when I was up here. Um, so I came up here in 1988, and I probably did weddings in the 1990s or something like that. I started doing them for friends. Um, I was a contra dancer over at uh, Warren Wilson College, and some of my friends were getting married. And um, I asked them, would you, do you have a photographer? Would you like some free pictures? And and they said, sure. So I started doing some some free weddings to kind of learn how to do it and get started. And um, then from there, I started doing it for real. And um, and it worked out good. I guess that's kind of the key. You mentioned the word free. If you say somebody yeah. free, they'll, yeah. they'll often they'll, you can oftentimes get a gig that way. Is that correct? Correct. Yes. It's, 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 a, it's, a, you know, it's a volunteer internship. And, you know, if it turns out good, great. And if not, then, you know, low expectations. <laughs> well, you know, you're giving actually great advice to anybody who's listening, that yeah. especially if they want to take pictures or they like doing that, just volunteer to do it and, and get, get it worked out. It's a great experience. Yeah. Now, what's changed too, and, and you'll talk a little bit about this, is the way pictures are taken. So when you used to take them, you would actually develop them at the same time. Is that correct? Correct. When I was when I was doing the weddings, um, that was still we were still doing it on film, and this was just before the the change to digital. And um, they would give me give me film, and they would only give me twenty four exposures on a roll. Right. So I had to, so I had to really be careful that I changed the film at, at the right time. So I wasn't changing film in the middle of something important, and then I had to keep my count on how many rolls I was using. <laughs> And, and my fingers didn't work really good. So it was kind of a pain and I was kind of glad, but, but I, I was, wasn't ready to make the change, change to digital because those digital cameras are so expensive. And I kind of took a hiatus for a while until I came back to digital again. Did you have a dark room? Um, I did when I was in high school, but um, not, not anymore. No. Because everything, I mean, yeah. everything no, but... we did was, was in color. And color is too technical to really do it at home. So, because uh, I know my dad had his own dark room and he loved it. You know, he did yeah. originally like he said black and white. Then he eventually did some color. Yeah. But boy, photography has changed. Because as you're talking, Paul, it reminds me of a story. You were saying that you were given so many rolls of film, and you had only those to work with, right? And, right. and you you had a, a budget. I guess had to plan it out. And I yeah. tell the story of um, my ex-wife. And she would get upset, Paul, true story, if I took more than one picture at a time, you know, and, and so it would sometimes it would take like three months to develop to take 24 pictures, you know, because right. yeah. you wait, you're wasting film. Right. And um, I mean, my God, it costs at time 10 cents a print or something. Correct. But talk about then the, the change and all of a sudden change when digital came into play. And it, I guess, made pictures, I guess, made shooting pictures a lot easier, would you say? Well, it was, it's a whole different ball game. When I was in, when I was in high school, I would buy film a um, hundred hundred feet on a roll, and then I would have a, a special little contraption that you can wind. You make your own thirty six exposure rolls, and so you're cutting your own. And I think I ended up with like five or six hundred hundred feet of film that I'd gone through in high school, and so and I had a dark room in the basement I built out of wood, and um, and that that worked out pretty good, but um, the whole digital thing, I was kind of resistant to it. I was like, "Oh God, this is like a whole new project," and and I wasn't really ready for it until I I bought a digital camera and found out, "Wow, this is pretty good here, actually." So good. Well, it's funny you said that, Paul, because a lot of people had that same reaction. I think photographers in particular that yeah. it, it couldn't be as good as a thirty-five millimeter camera. Exactly. Do you, do you ever shoot? Even nowadays, do you ever shoot anything with with a camera, or you always use your your, your digital stuff? Everything's digital now. It's, the digital is just so much easier because I can shoot the pictures, take them home, put them on the computer, edit them, and then put them up on Flickr, and people can have the whole batch of them the next day, or sometimes even the same day. So it's just more convenient. 
And it's so easy um, the way you do this. And we should talk a little bit about what you do. And I should compliment you because you do it kind of as a public service or hobby or whatever. But yeah. talk about what happens then. So if somebody works with you and you worked with over the last several years, a whole bunch of different organizations. Is that correct? Yeah. What, what are some of the kinds of organizations you've worked with? Um, well, I do a lot of work with the Weaverville um, Center for Retirement or Creative Living. Uh, the, it's the Weaverville Community Center. I do a lot of their events and I do a lot of 5K races. Um, this past Saturday, I shot the Asheville Half Marathon and 10K. And on Friday evening, I shot the Karen Cragnolan Park. Oh, yeah. For, the Greenway that was for Riverlink, and then earlier on Friday I was out in uh, Mount Mitchell at the Mount Mitchell Golf Course shooting for the Southern Appalachian Repertory Theater. So, do you, do you have a favorite type thing you shoot? Um. Well, let's see. Um. I, I guess I just I like variety, and um, and some jobs are just easier than others. Um, I shot a Czech presentation event over at, um, um, where was that? Over at um, uh, Highlands, at the Highlands, Highland Brewing. And um, that turned out to be a real small event. There's only like 10 people there, but um, they were all very happy to get a big check from the, from the, the night flight 5K race that had been put on. And they were all very cooperative and had a lot of food there. And so it was a pretty easy gig. So that was good. What makes a gig easy versus hard? Um, well, I guess my hardest ones are I actually I do some paid work. And um, um, I did some um, Grand Fondo bike races. And those are like all day deals. And I have to go travel all the way down to, to, um, to Brevard. And uh, oh God, one, I was down there, I had to be down there like eight o'clock in the morning. And, um, and I was there until like four o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody knows where I am. <laughs> and, um, and now I'm shooting pictures. And I didn't realize it at the time, but um, I had, had, I'd had to go in, out into the field to take care of business a little bit. And I got chiggers all over oh. my feet. And I didn't know what they were, but um by that was on Saturday, but by, on, by on Sunday, man, I was just about couldn't stand it. And I had to go to the doctor on Monday to get some relief from the chiggers. And that was not fun. So, so chances are you're not going to do that gig again if it comes up. No, I was available, but um, they didn't they didn't call me this year. <laughs> um, so I, and there was another one, the Asheville Grand Fondo. I shot that last year. And uh, this year they said that the, the attendance was down. And they didn't need me as an extra photographer. So that was okay with me. So back from your days as taking pictures in high school, um, do you have a preference in terms of a live event versus, you know, just posed pictures? You know, you did some sports pictures, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Football and basketball and things like that. And then, and then did a lot of yearbook photos. And, um, and I, those are fun. You know, I like to interactive, you know, I, I try to, and the weddings are sort of the same, you're posing people, but I try to pose them very quickly because people have a very short shelf life and you got to keep the show moving and set them up, take the pictures and make sure they come out good. And, but that's, it's fun. So I enjoy what's, that. What's amazing with what you do, especially with digital uh, pictures is you take a, a bunch of pictures for an event do you yep. then share all the pictures or you edit them down somewhat? I edit them down um, and I put them on my computer and then I go through them. And um, like I was just working on the, the, the um, half marathon and the 10 K and, you know, maybe 10 or 15% of them, they'll have their eyes closed or they'll be looking down and they'll have a sad expression. And um, I try and just, you know, I just want good pictures of people that, you know, that they would like. So you know, any picture that's not flattering, I try to take that out, so. Well, it's funny. I always tell people when they take a picture of me or Cynthia, my beautiful bride, to always take three, you know, just for that reason, you know, right. because right. one you, chance to go on to get at least one pretty good one, you know, but yeah. so I get so annoyed, Paul, when somebody just takes one picture, you know, and then I learned something else too. I don't know, probably they don't do this with you, but now when I ask somebody to take a picture, 
I sometimes ask to see it, you know, before they I let them leave because you know, <laughs> they, they may close their eyes or not not look at it, you know, yep. whatever. But you yep. don't at this point in time, you've done this so long, I guess you don't do that. You just take the pictures and you're going to be happy with the pictures. Uh, well, it depends. Um, when I was doing the Karen Craig Nolan Park right. thing um, over by the French Broad River, um, the lighting was it was it was like five o'clock in the afternoon. And the sun was very bright, it was very hot, and the light is coming in really stark from one direction. And some of the people are in the shade under a tent, and some people are in bright light. Um, sometimes they're backlit, and I'm using a flash to fill it in. So I'm, I'm shooting and looking to kind of make sure that they come out good. How did you learn after you, well, in, in, in the very beginning, how did you learn to become a photographer? Um, well, it was just a lot of, um, um, kind of self-education. Well, I had a really good teacher, Bob Collister, who was the photographer at the Messenger Gazette, and he was just a really good guy. And um, I would go on a, a, assignments with him, and he would kind of tell me how to do stuff and show me things. And and um, also when I was getting started, I remember I, I went to the library, and I think I read every book um, in the library on photography. And that was kind of a good start. And then I, I've taken, I still take course. I took, um, took the AB Tech um, digital photography course, took the beginner and I took the intermediate class twice because I really liked the teacher and you get a lot of good feedback and it was kind of stretching me into different directions because I do a lot of events and sports and the class was more artistic, you know, stuff that not my thing, but... <laughs> By the way, to give a shout out, the the teacher, do you, do you remember his name or do you have it? Um, John Gro Grover, Grover, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So yep. at AB Tech, if yep. you want to learn photography, how about YouTube? Do you watch any stuff on YouTube? Um, occasionally. Um, every once in a while I get stuck with some particular issue and uh, I'll Google it and look for YouTube tutorials on, on things. Like, for, for example, I'm going up to a reunion in September up in New Jersey, and they want me to take a group picture of 140 people at the reunion. And I got a new flash um, transmitter for my camera that's gonna trigger three flash units. And I haven't really learned how to use it yet, but I'll go on YouTube and look for tutorials. And usually that, hopefully that'll work. Now, is that your reunion? Yes. Yeah, but the question, are you going to be in that picture also? Well, they said that that's one of the stipulations is I have to be in the right. picture. I have to be in the picture. So I have one or I have two plans. On plan A is I have a little remote um, trigger that right. I can aim at the camera, and that should set it off. Um, and if that works, and I'll have to test it. I haven't tested it yet, but hopefully that'll work. If that doesn't work, the camera has a 10 second delay, right. so I can I can start the the trigger on the camera, and then that gives me 10 seconds to get into the picture. And then it takes the picture. So you use that a lot to delay if you want to be in the picture. Um, not really, not really, not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not usually in in the pictures that I that I take. I'm saying I'm never in the pictures really. Actually, so. well, yeah. I'm just thinking out loud with you. I think I'm the only one. Wherever I see you, I always take your picture because I feel bad. Nobody, you know, takes your picture. So, yeah. um, so you'll get pictures that I take. Well, I think the best thing we can do too, which is really cool is we're talking about some of the things you've done, but I think it's better just to show it if we can. I'm sure. going to, let me just see if I can let you do screen sharing and you're going to really be impressed when you see what Paul's going to show you. Why don't you uh, click it on Paul because you'll, you'll have a much better sense of what Paul King does if you take a look at some of his stuff. And so this is Paul showing his screen and in a second we're going to show his, now what is this Paul? This is, what, this is your album of stuff? This is my Flickr account, and um, I've got I've got eighty eight thousand photos <laughs> on here. By the way, I should know this. So Flickr, do you pay for storage, or the more pictures you put, is that how it works? It's a pretty good deal. I think it's sixty five dollars a year, wow. and it's unlimited storage. So and you're you're taking advantage of the unlimited storage. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm a, I'm a good user, so they haven't they haven't said anything to me yet and it's working very well so it's good recommendation good. so by the way Flickr. so 
that's a, a nominal storage fee. So anybody can set up a Flickr account? Yes, I think they even have a free um, version, yeah, that you can have up to a certain amount for free. And then once you go over a certain amount, then you got to pay for the professional version of it. By the way, we should just mention this. You're giving some great advice here, Paul, that if somebody wants to storage, store their photos, uh -huh. this seems as good as any place to store photos. Would you say so? It's, it's really good. It's real good. I, I, if, you can, if you can see down here, I, we had my, uh, this is my high school yearbook. Okay. Well, my... wow. Wait, and by the way, um, does anybody have access to that or they have to go through you? Uh, to um, look. Well, the way it works is, I if I if I want to share the the year. Please go ahead. Yeah, it's really cool. I, on this on this arrow right here, I click right. on the arrow, and then that opens up a, a a little screen, and then I highlight the the link basically, and then copy that, and then post it, and then I can post it onto um, um, Facebook or. Or put it into an email or whatever. Just so. that link. Just that link you copied. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now show because I'm, I'm, you're giving me an idea here. If I want to go through this, so open up your high school yearbook, if you would. This is your high school yearbook. Yes, it is. Okay. So now, what? Wow. So you went through every page and took a picture of it, or how did you do that? Yeah. Um, what I do, I set up an easel and two flashes with a camera and a transmitter on the camera and receivers on the on the flashes. And um, then once I set it up, then I just kind of, I, I, I did the cover and then I just started working my way through the, through the, through the yearbook page by page and uh, took pictures of each, um, each page basically. Yeah. And then, and then sometimes if there was a picture, if there was a, a, a big group picture, I didn't do it here, but I did it at the end. Let's see, I would, I would do a close up of the of the big group. Well, cl click it on if you would. To make it bigger. Yeah. So this which group is this a choir group? Yeah. Um, boy, you're already doing a pretty good job on getting groups um, of people. That, that's pretty good a yeah. group shot there, and and you can get it larger. Wow. Now, show if you would, Paul, one of the pictures that you took. You said some of the sports pictures. Go to back to one of the sports pictures. Okay, let's this see. is so cool. You're giving me an idea here. Well, I like the I like the year the, the cheerleaders. So <laughs> all the cheerleader pictures, I took I took that picture. I, that was definitely one of mine. And um, well, I remember show that. One. By the way, since they credit for it, show the cheerleader picture. <clears throat> that was okay. that was a good one. So yeah. this is now you can enlarge it, like you said, right? Yep. Okay. Now. I guess if you wanted to, you and I were talking off the air, you could, I guess, you could crop this if you wanted and just take part of that picture and use it? Um, I don't know about that, but um, what you can do is you can go down here to the to the bottom right, right. and click on the um, this little icon for the um, shopping cart, and then you can, you can get prints oh, okay. of the pictures, basically. Okay. And are their prices reasonable? They're very good, and the quality is very good too. Okay, yeah, also, very good. And uh, if you don't want to use Flickr, you can just down, you can use a down arrow thing. Right. Just download the um, that particular picture, and then you can put it on your computer, and you can do anything that you want with it, basically. Okay. What's interesting, what you're saying, Paul, and boy, how how times have changed, is that now people take so many thousands of pictures. But they print out so few. You know, one of the things I, I miss, but when you had a film, you at least print it out, you'd see them, you'd save them. Now, the last time I print out pictures, I don't even know when. You know, yeah. even you, how often do you print out pictures? Not very often. I think I think I probably printed out. I mean, I had a, I had a friend um, and I helped him get into an apartment. And we took a picture of him and his minister and me and the three of us. And that was on a delayed 10 second. And that I printed that out so that we could each have a print of it. So that was still, and that was last year. So now here with Flickr, I guess you could choose certain pictures and then they would make the album for you. They also do an album. That's how they make the money, I guess. Um, well, they don't, they, they print the pictures. You can, any, any, if you want to print one or 10 or right. however, they'll print them for you. 
Okay, but there, you know, there are other companies, right, that make albums out of it for you. Oh, Flickr doesn't do that? Um, I don't know. I don't okay. know. Show me just back to the uh, the yearbook. It's so cool, Paul. Show me one picture you took, uh, a, a, a sporting picture, one of the game pictures. I was looking okay. at them. There's another year. There's more cheerleaders there. <laughs> more cheerleaders Paul, there. Did, did the advisor work when they read this that? You know, at the whole yearbook, that thirty-seven percent were cheerleaders. Thirty-seven <laughs> percent were cheerleaders. No, they they, I was I was the photography editor, and and the editor, we got along great. <laughs> in in fact, I I learned that um, uh, her name was Elaine Welly, and she lost her yearbook, oh. and she was so happy that when I that I put up this digital version of it because. She had lost her yearbook, and then another classmate said her her yearbook was burned up in a fire. So, um, so several of the people have really appreciated it, and I've had, let's see, I don't know if it so shows the views on it here, but I've had a, over four hundred views on it. So it's been very popular. No, it's, it's just incredible. Just one picture I said, yeah, that you took of a sporting event that they were playing. Okay. Like this one. Let's see another sporting event here. Let's see. And do you have anybody that year was became a, a well known athlete? Um, no, I don't think we had any particular athletes. Let's see. Well, that's that's my self portrait right there. Let me see it. Click it if you would. I love it. <laughs> that's a double exposure that I did in my basement, and that's my first camera. And I love it. Very cool. That came out pretty well, so I was lucky. So, how long did this take you just through the whole yearbook? Um, I, I think I did over like three or four days, and I think I did like three hours a session, so probably nine, ten hours, something like that. But so. absolutely fantastic! I mean, this this yeah. is incredible what you did on this. So I see the guys playing basketball. You can in, at the bottom there. Just click that on. That yeah. Point, yeah. Yep, I think that's one of my shots, I believe. So. Okay, very, very nice. Very cool. So, Paul, go beyond this one, but I've never seen anything quite like this. That whole high school um, yearbook, if you lose or misplace it, or anybody, Paul, I know I, I'd love to get a copy out of this, of my high school yearbook. Go mm -hmm. back to um, some of the other stuff. So go back to the, the home page, if you were there, Flickr. Where, where's the flick? Uh, where is it? Flickr, yeah. Go back to where you show your other stuff. Yeah. So now you have how many albums here? Um, <clears throat> about. I don't have how many albums, but I have over 88,000 photos. So we see the photos, but how many, 20 events, 50 events? What would you say? A lot of? Uh, um, well, I've been doing it since I think 2018. And so there's probably a couple hundred albums, I'm yeah. guessing. Wow. Now go back to the one you just did recently, uh, the fourth one to the right, the SART um, golf tournament. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. So SART just had it as a fundraiser for SART. It yeah. was really nice. Now, so everybody who was there got a copy of these pictures. Was that the idea? Well, I sent it to the, the organizer okay. and, um, and she can send out an email with a link in the email to everybody. And also I put it on their Facebook page and they can also do that. So anyone who can see their Facebook page can click on the link and then it takes them right to the to the Flickr page. And you're already seeing this just recently, 50 plus views have, have already taken a look at this. So what, you you took pictures every foursome? Yes, they had 22 teams and I got 18 out of them, out of 22, so pretty close. Now, talk, teach me if you would, for benefit of my benefit, other people's benefits, Go down to any foursome picture and um, uh, like how many, just click on anyone. So this one, for example, uh, how many times would you, um, how many times do you take that picture? Um, usually twice, two times. Just really? Twi because I told you I, I go for three, but you'll just bug somebody for two times and, and that they can usually get it? What, well, for the, for these, what I was doing, let's see. Is I, I had a spot picked out in the shade, which is great. And so, yeah, and so once I kind of figured out um, the settings for that 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 specific location, 
then I was pretty confident that I could, if I just did two shots, I would probably get, you know, they would be good with no eyes closed or anything. So now teach me if you would, when you're shooting that picture, what do you tell them? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to corral the people right. and get them close together and then just have them looking at me. And then I just kind of give them a one, two, three click and one, two, three click. And usually that's all that needs to be done. Do you tell them to smile? Do you tell them to do anything in particular? It depends. I, I usually they're usually they're in a good mood and they're they're smiling already. So, you know. What you, I love that photo. You know, it just looks like they're having a good time. Great photo. Yeah. Um, what about the um, idea that some people like this? My wife does. I don't. Where sometimes they'll take two regular shots and then say a goofy shot. Have you ever seen that? You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I think um. I did this for, um, I think for Connect Bunkum. Yeah. They they had the uh, a ceremony over at uh, the Karen Craig Nolan Park, and I did a nice regular normal group picture for them, and then and I said, well, that was pretty good, but it's kind of boring. So <laughs> on this next shot, we're gonna go woohoo! And they thought that was pretty funny, and then I told them one, two, three, and they all went woohoo! And it came out great. They they really. And I think I did it a couple times and it came out really well. So I, I love it. So they'll oftentimes they'll choose the, the funny one as opposed to the serious one. Yeah. 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 And, and take a look at another series of photos. Paul, you just did it, my request, which is very much appreciated, but there was a recent, um, a show at, uh, it was a Dinah Worth in the black box theater yep. by my friend, Marcy Gallagher. And that yep. was uh, for a show called at the cafe and just yep. put, Put up those pictures. Yep. Yeah, that was a good one. And uh, I was at the Wortham Center for the Performing Arts. Right. And I got it at the front door, and the front door was locked. <laughs> I so, know, I, yeah. so I decided, well, I'm going to show how we got there. So you had to go through the parking garage. I love that. Yeah. Go more through the parking garage, go out of the parking garage, <laughs> go behind the parking garage, and then find the secret entrance where you can actually go in. <laughs> that's where they had the sign, and then they had the the, the, the set and all that good stuff. So. Now you've done, um, I assume you've done other shows as well? Um, um, well, they have little um, little small plays at the, at the Weaverville Community Center and I've done them up there. But um, this is the first one I've done well, at the Wortham Center. And just show some of them. Let's get out of some of these opening pictures. What I love about it, Paul, they're kind of in order here. And so uh, now... What you're showing here, you don't show every picture you did take, or you do show every picture. Um, well, I'm trying to think. I, I probably I usually edit them gotcha. and I go through them, and um, you know, occasionally people they've got a bad expression on their right on, or something. You know, anything that's not flattering, I try to take those out. So, well, click on one just to show it. Okay, oh, I know those people. That's not overly flattering on me, but this was part of the audience that night. Yes. Um, how often do you crop the stuff you you take, or you let them to crop it? I I my 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 guiding philosophy is make it good in the camera because I'm I'm shooting so many pictures that I don't really have time to to do anything, <laughs> things right. like that. So I try to do I try to get the exposure just right, make the focus just right, and the cropping in the camera because once it's shot, that's it. And that's, yeah, talk about that, Paul, too. That's kind of a, a skill, I guess, you have that you know, like when you're taking a picture, like what are you trying to, to get for it? You know, um, eye contact or all the people in this scene or how do you know what's a good shot? Well, it just, you know, it, it depends, but um Mainly, I'm trying to fill the frame. I don't right. want to. Be, I don't want any wasted space around the edges any more than is necessary, and try to keep the people not really centered, but just you know, fill the frame is my guiding principle, I guess. And I think that's great advice if anybody's listening. And just stay there, yeah. write that picture, show that one if you would. And what a perfect shot! As you said, there were six people in that shot. And you yeah. really captured, I mean, that was what they were doing there. And you got yeah. all six in there. And it's like sort of centered, but not exactly. But that was a really good shot of 
you know, what they were doing that day. Thank you. Um, yeah. You know, and, and so what you've just taught me here is so kind of the real key is the big thing to shoot for is to th what you call fill the frame. Fill the frame. Yep. And, and what do you mean by that? Um, well, I try not to have, I, I consider all this black as wasted space and, you know, you want to show the people, you want the faces to be as big as possible and just avoid um, a lot of dead space, basically. And again, you had, no, you had no choice on that one because there was black, it was a black background. Um, right. You know, but, I, would. Yeah. but I just try to fill it with as much of the people as the, you know, like. Well, take that one. That's a great photo right there. Yeah, right yeah. that one. And Karen Covington, yeah, what a um, picture, you know, that that's that's what she was doing there. Yep. And that was really a, a great photo when you think about it. You know, she was on the phone having a good time. What yep. a great shot, you know. I just love that, Paul. Um, you know, and I'm sure she'll love it as well. By the way, um, a, a tip if anybody's listening, they don't know it. But if you see this picture or somebody shows you a picture, just right, if you don't know how to do it, just right click your mouse, right? And you can save it. If you're using a PC, you can save it by right clicking your mouse. Uh, I'm not sure that yeah. works. In oh, this. in Flickr? Well, then I could copy it or something and then um, right click. Uh, well, yeah, you, you well, did it. When you clicked it, I saw save as. Was that an yeah. option? Well, no, if you want if you want to copy this picture. Right. And and I, I take the, the pictures are all in high high quality, high resolution. Right. So the best way to collect it is to is to click on oh, this, gotcha. little, this little down arrow. Right. And that downloads the whole file. And so you get a you get a high resolution, you know, good quality picture that way. Yeah. Great photo, Paul. You know, and maybe we'll have time for maybe just one other album. So we saw your high school yearbook, we saw a golf tournament, we saw a show. Maybe one other album you're proud of. Let's see. Now let's see what do we do here. Or well, one of the races. You seem you seem like you do a lot of races. I do a lot of races. Yeah, this one I just shot. This one on Saturday, okay. the Asheville Half Marathon and 10K. And so these are a little bit different. <clears throat> I, I try to pick a spot on the course right. where I know that the runners are going to come by, and so I got everything kind of set up, and I'm in a chair. Um, and I got my camera on a monopod. And then the most important thing is I have a big sign that says smile. Oh. <laughs> I and love it. Okay. The sign, the sign really works. Well, so uh, I'm looking at it. I'm so impressed. Third from third row from the bottom, from top, that one, this guy right here, the guy uh, over here, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, seventh from the right, him. Yeah. Let's just see what he looks like. Yeah, wow. That there it is. Great photo, isn't it? You know, yep, yep. and intentionally, I love that photo because what you blurred the background. No, um, this was it was early in the morning. Yeah, um, the race started at um, I think seven a.m. I think, um, and I was at the four mile point, so that would be if they do five minutes a mile, it's twenty minutes to get there. So it was about seven twenty. So it was still not real bright. So I was using uh, a very wide open um, f-stop, f2.8, f and that automatically gives you what's called bokeh. Um, to, and he's not in perfect focus, right. but he's in pretty good focus. Um, he's, also in pretty, I, he's also in pretty good shape, I would say, huh? <laughs> pretty good, yeah, yeah, pretty good. So the, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, Paul, and I only shared my reactions from time to time. What kind of reactions do you get from people when they get their pictures? Um, mostly good. The the runners, I, I try to go to events where people want their picture to be taken. Right. And um, and mostly good. Um, and mostly the the, the top 50%, 75%, um, they're all fine. Um, some of the people towards the end of the race they don't want their picture taken. That's, that's, that's fine. And I, I kind of just, you know, if they put their, their hand up, you know, no picture, that's, that's fine. And um, they don't want their picture taken and that's okay. Why do you think that's the case? Um, because they're so, they're so far behind <laughs> at the end of the race. So, you know, 
they don't yeah. think they don't think they, they look good or something. So I don't know. But but I'm just looking at these. I'm so amazed. I love that. So they're running by you and you tell them all to have a smile. Well, I just like to sign, do the job. And, and do most of them have a smile? Well, not. I mean, these. This is the. This 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 guy is the first person, so he's pretty serious, but he smiles <laughs> a little bit. And then There's, these are all very. These are the top runners, and they're smiling. Now she's smiling. She's got a good smile there. Yeah. Wow. Great. So, yeah. So that's a good one. I mean, this is amazing, and this is now. Anybody can take these pictures. These are with a, a regular digital camera, or you have a, a really good digital camera, I assume. I have a, a good. It's a good. It's a. Um, it's a. It's not a. It's not the top of the line Canon. Um, the top of the line Canon cameras are like six thousand dollars just right. for the body, and uh, mine is a little bit older. It's a Canon seven um, D Mark II, which is probably I don't know about five or seven years old or something like that but it's still a very good camera and does the job you're giving a lot of good suggestions let me ask you one other paul if i can if somebody's sure. shooting a, an event wherever the event is with a, a um a camera phone right uh -huh. what's what's one or two things you would tell them to do when they take their pictures well you take a lot of pictures <laughs> Number right. one. good advice you know, if you take, especially if you take a, a group of picture of people, you know, take more than one shot. You want, you know, take at least two and probably maybe even three or four. And that way, if there's one person who has their eyes closed, you know, you can use another picture. That's probably one. And by the way, before I'm, I let you go, just come out of this and then just go back to where we were before. So you close, close down the screen. Okay. If you would, please. Yeah. So good advice. So you're taking pictures, take a, a, a bunch of pictures. Any other yeah. advice you can think of? Um, well, hold the camera steady and um, take your time to and, and fill the frame. That's my one. By the way, and I hadn't thought of yeah. that. Get so, in there, fill the frame. Because sometimes I guess I'm far back and the, the frame is small. I'm better off getting closer and, and focusing it in. I don't do that yeah. enough. Thank you. Yeah. What, what about one other one? And I'll let you give the advice about how important it is to claim uh, to clean your, um, you know, your, your camera, the, uh, you know, the, the uh, shutter or the lens. How important is that to keep it clean? Well, it's it's pretty important. Um, the the lenses nowadays are very small, and they're recessed, so they they automatically stay pretty clean. But if you drop your camera or your phone. Um, into water, or if it gets rained on, or if it gets, you know, sprayed somehow with um, hairspray or something like that, that can really mess up the lens. And then just a little bit of, um, of, of um, isopropanol alcohol, and you cannot, do not use a paper towel. You need to use a, uh, an eyeglass, a, a microfiber cloth to clean it because you don't want to scratch it. Paper towels will scratch it. You don't ever want to use paper towels, but a microfiber cloth is good. How about tissues? Well, tissues are made out of paper and those paper fibers, um, they can scratch your lens. So you don't want to use tissues. Okay. Unless and, where, it's, and where do you get these uh, lens? Where do you get these things to clean your camera? Um, if you just go on, micro, look for microfiber, cleaning lens cleaning cloths microfiber lens cleaning cloth you, you, they're available in many places Very good advice paul king if somebody wants to get in touch with you i guess for one of two 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 reasons one to find out about some of the pictures you've already taken or two to contact you to invite you to an event or something else what's the best bet to reach you well my email address is probably the best way to contact me and it's P D K I N G N C P D King N C at AOL.com. And that's a good way. And I'm also on Facebook, Paul King on Facebook, and I'm pretty easy to find. Okay. And I want to thank you, Paul, for a couple of things. One for being my guest on today's podcast. Also for the service you give to the community and some of the cool stuff you've done. I just so admire you for what you do. And it's just been a real pleasure talking to you um, and having you see your work. And just, I, I love it, Paul. So thank you.
I, well, I enjoy doing it. It's fun. You know, I, I go to interesting places and see interesting people, and it's a, it's a cool trip. I'd also like to thank my producer, Kathy Tassetti, for uh, producing today's show. And Paul, I say I hope to see you soon, but inevitably I'm going to because wherever an event is, especially if it's we will center, nine out of ten chances you're going to be there shooting pictures. So thank you for all that you do, Paul. That's true. Okay, great.